Hi there, this is Carrie at WooingNature.life and this is your monthly reading for May for Pisces. Hi Piscean friends. Uh, I am going to be reading today from the Sacred Earth Oracle. I'm going to pull two cards from this deck to just give us some general focus for the month of May or something to um, chew on for the month of May. And then I will be reading from Carolyn Mace's Archetype cards just to see what kind of energies, personalities, and people are in play or in and around us. And then I'll also be reading from one of my favorite decks. This is the Tarot of the Thousand and One Nights. And then I'm going to follow up with the Alphabet for Lovers, which is really um, cards about love in general. Um, could be love of family, friends, spouses, children, all of that. So we're just going to look a little bit at our relationships and see where that goes. So before I get into the details, I'm just going to pull a couple of cards from the Sacred Earth. I always pull two from this deck. And this is just usually gives us kind of a focal point or something to think about for the month of May. So we'll see what you guys have here. All right, so we've got specialization and we have context, two great um, things to think about Pisces as you're coming on the spring season and you're coming into um, some new energy and some powerful energy as well because we are coming out of a global health crisis where many of us have been in and have been um, um, finitely focused on certain things. Um, um, no doubt lots of people have been having some revelations while they've been in, and I don't think that that excludes you, Pisces. So we've got two things coming up, your context. Context is really important because in, the, in context, when we think about context, you're thinking about the all of the information that surrounds your being and who you are, how you operate. Um, your context could be your own personal history. Your context can also include your family history, especially because our families have such an influence on who we are, our ancestry, our culture, people within our specific culture, um, or your nationality. So you'll want to be thinking about what you, who you are and how you have been operating in context with all of these things and how um, all of these experiences of other people, how the experiences of your family, being in your family, the experiences that you've had at, on your own, how that is um, contextualizing your life and how it is shaping your vision for your future and also how it may be hindering you getting to um, your future or something that you may have a goal around. So context becomes very important. I'm seeing also here this dragonfly. Dragonfly is a dream keeper totem. Um, so this uh, has a lot to do or may have something to do with a vision that you have for yourself. It could be a plan, a project. It could be an idea, um, an entrepreneurial effort, or it could just be the way that you want to live your life moving forward at moving from this point forward. So this is a dream time keeper. So you want to be paying attention to your dreams also, but also your waking dreams, which are your visions of your new reality. And then also knowing that um, this is a leap. This also, this animal also represents taking leaps because literally this is a water animal and then it it sprouts wings and then it flies. And so in its life cycle, it represents being able to take certain leaps um, that you may not even think are possible, but yet they are through transformation. And that transformation for you, Pisces, is going to come from you being able to contextualize your situation and um, and see it for what it, it truly is. Okay. And then the next card is specialization. Now, when we start thinking about specializations, we're thinking about um, getting certified in certain things um, um, and also honing in on your talents. Some of you are multi-talented. You have many talents. Um, you might need to narrow it down and start to think about what you want to specialize in. What is your uh, what is your niche? What is your unique 
uh, expression in the world and how that relates in all of the situations that you're in, whether it's family or friends or in a workspace. Um, certainly, if you are dealing with work life, if you're thinking about your work life, you want to think about what you bring to the table um, in your work situation and how that is benefiting those people around you and being very clear about that, especially if you're in a situation where you feel like you're not being respected in your work or where you feel like you're not being um, what you bring to the table is not being um recognize, you have to recognize it in yourself first clearly, and then you'll be able to articulate in that to other people in a way that's not arrogant or boastful, but just as matter of fact, you know, this is what I'm bringing to you at the table and this is what um, I feel like we need. And that's it. So um, um, I'm seeing a lot of spiritual work here for a lot of people. I am seeing the um, the the um, elevation of the chakras, which is about ascension and raising our energy vibrations up and being aware of those areas within our chakra system that may need to be cleansed, cleared, and moved out of uh, where debris may have um, energetic debris may have been accumulating around those areas, so that it can free you up so that you can channel what it is that you need and so that you can become a channel for what it is that you want to specialize in, all right? Or how you want to um, really show your, your craft. So specialization, context, month of May, two things for you to think about as you are going about the month and also paying attention to where that shows up for you in your life. All right, so we're moving right along to the Carolyn Mace Archetype cards. As I had said to you before, this is a deck that I use to, um, not very often, I don't bring them out very often because they can be um, very reveal revealing and sometimes we have to be ready for those revelations. But when I prayed on what cards I was going to use in your readings this month, um, the Archetype cards came up, so I'm being obedient and letting the cards speak but these are um this is about personalities it's about temperaments it's about um the little ways that we are <laughs> and the, our little human ways you know what i mean they can sometimes be the things that annoy us but it can also be the things that teach us the most so when these cards come out and i'm going to be pulling three for for you today Pisces, um, you just want to think about where this may resonate with you. If this is a personality trait that you have, even if it's a negative or a positive, it's just so that you know, so you'll know how to heal it or handle it. It could be people outside of you that come in with these types of um, ways or um, behaviors or what have you. Um, it could be something that's coming to you to alert you to a certain type of personality as a protective measure or as a um, just be aware measure. Okay, so we're just going to pull three of those. Um, these cards come in light and shadow. So if they come in in reverse, I read the shadow. If they come in upright, I read the light. Um, and then for some of them, I may share with you both sides of them because sometimes that'll give us some insight as to how to deal with the energy that's coming toward us. So we have um, the God here and in the light attribute, God represents benevolence, benevolence and compassion, recognizing the eternal force within yourself and others and not just any force, but the force of benevolence and the force of compassion because compassion is is a power force. We don't think of it that way. We always think people who are compassionate, oh, they're lowly, they're humble, they're this, and oh, that's very nice. And that's great. But God is a powerful being. And for your God self to be the essence of your God self, to be about benevolence and compassion and about recognizing that within yourself and recognizing that God self in others. So this is um, this is a challenge I'm going to say for you, Pisces, for the month of May, is to see the God in yourself and to see the God in the people around you as well. 
All right, we have a uh, shadow gossip or a closet gossip, as I like to say. The gossip in the shadow thrives on the power of passing on private or secret information and betraying confidences. So if you are doing that, then you'll want to stop doing that. And if there are people around you, you'll want to be aware of those people that may be passing on information. Remember, this is something someone said to me and I, or has said around me and or said, and I think it's really true, and that is don't tell stories that aren't yours to tell, okay? Let other people tell their own stories, and what you can do is just listen if that's what you want to do. Um, but be mindful of those people who may be spreading gossip or untruths or they, 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 they feed off of that. They feed off of a power that they feel from doing that. Okay, so I'm going to read you for those gossipy people. This is the light attribute of a gossip awakens consideration for the feelings of others and honors trust. And so if a person is being in this shadow gossip side, it's probably because their trust has been dishonored in some kind of way. Maybe somebody has done that or they don't understand how on, how trust and someone trusting you is important part of feeling good about yourself too, right? And also people say, you know, talk, little minds think about or talk about people. Great minds talk about ideas. I think that's it. I'm probably jacking that up, but anyway. All right, and now we have a prostitute in the light side. The prostitute accentuates the challenge of surviving without negotiating the power of your spirit. Who thought the prostitute could teach you something like that? But yes, and I wanna say that again, accentuates the challenge of surviving without negotiating the power of your spirit. Because we, a lot of us are in this situation right now. A lot of us are prostitutes. We don't want to admit it because we think being a prostitute is bad. But in this case, what the, um, what the light attribute of the prostitute is teaching you is how to not compromise who you are for a dollar or for some money or for some whatever else, you're not negotiating your power, the power of your spirit and your survival. You're thinking about survival. Well, in order to survive, in order for me to make it, in order for me to pay my bills, in order for me to be able to get my nails done, my hair done, whatever it is, I have to do this thing that really is me negotiating the power of my spirit just so that I can keep going. And this is a process right here. It takes a little while to um, move past this energy um, because a lot of us in society, we do. We prostitute ourselves out for a paycheck every couple of weeks or every month. Some people are miserable in their work. Some people are feeling very much, um, you know, turned out um, and they're in their jobs and in their uh, legitimate work situations. Um, so this is something for you to be very aware of um, during the month of May, and especially as we are moving back into the workforce or as job situations and work situations are opening back up after the global health crisis that we've been going through, um, to think about when you go back into your workspace, how are you going to... Um, to position yourself or how are you going to communicate uh, what you need and what you are and are not negotiating as far as what your inner sanctum and what your inner spirit needs. That's a very important lesson for all of us. And a lot of people are examining it right now because they have the time to do it. They actually have the time to sit and think, you know what? I don't want to be at this place. I don't want to be a prostitute for my boss. I don't want to be, you know, turning tricks out here in these streets just so that I can have benefits or whatever. And I'm not knocking the benefits because, hey, we all need those. But you got to think about what's beneficial to you, Pisces. You got to think about what's been, what is beneficial to you and what is really a benefit. And that also can hold true for our family situations too, because some people are prostituting themselves out for love. Okay, I'll just do whatever it is that my partner wants me to do because I want to feel loved. 
So you got to be real mindful about that. Prostitution. Hooking don't just happen on the streets, okay? It doesn't. All right, so we're moving right along to the Tarot of the Thousand and One Nights. This is my storytelling card deck, and I like to go to Tarot for details. So this is just kind of some more details, getting a little more detailed into your situation for the month of May, um, Pisces. So what I have here is the Knave of Wands, which is a messenger, the messenger card in this particular deck. Um, and I feel like the message is not coming clear right now um, as to where you are and what it is that you are um, seeing, observing. Um, you're, you're, you're trying, you have tried to move away from a situation that um, it's really something you don't have any control over. It just is what it is. And that's what it is. And you've been trying to move away from it, but you're also looking back um, as well. So you kind of got your rear view mirror thing going on and you want to be real mindful about that. Because if you're moving on, you don't want to be looking backwards, but it looks like you're looking in reverse. You're looking back over your shoulder, maybe asking yourself some questions. Should I have done it? Do I need to move away from this? Maybe it had good things going for it and I'm not sure. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. I think the thing that you're walking away from represented a certain kind of structure for you. All right. So, yeah, you are moving on. You are off into the wild blue yonder. You are looking for something, but what's going to come is going to be much different and much bigger than what you anticipated, right? So you just have to keep your eyes open um, and not just to like your, not just your physical eye, but you also have to keep your spiritual eye open because I'm getting that this, this is some unexpected. Um, good unexpected, not bad unexpected, good unexpected. And I think that that's why you have to stop looking over your shoulder because you can't see what's ahead of you if you're looking backwards all the time. All right, so now we have this um, nine of pentacles. This is the nine of pentacles in reverse. It represents, um, um, you know, like the wellspring, um, coming toward the wellspring, coming toward the thing that you either dreamed of, imagined, was anticipating, wanted to be there. This is something that is not only nourishing to your um, physical well-being, but also to your, um, well, it is nourishing to your physical well-being. It could represent resources that are coming or um, resources that become available to you. Um, but right now, it doesn't seem like it's coming that way. And again, that's probably because you're still looking in the reverse. You got to keep looking forward, Pisces, because you're going to miss something here. All right, we've got the judgment card here. To me, this is about the time when, um, you know, you may be feeling exhausted. You may be feeling like you're out of it. Like, I can't go on anymore. I feel like I'm just, you know, I'm left for dead. And then along comes something to kind of pick you up and move you forward and say, you know, yeah, you have come as far as you can come on your own. But there is help. And that's what I'm seeing here for you Um Pisces is that help is on the way. Help is out there. Spiritual help more than anything else. But again, you just have to be listening and paying attention to all those things so that you to you have to be listening in the spirit so that you can hear and see. That's just how it works. Spiritual listening is different from listening with your ears. Okay. Very different. You have to listen so you can see. You have to look so you can hear. It's different in the spirit realm. All right, so there we have the three of chalices. Three of chalices means that things are coming together. Comrades are coming together. People are um, gathering in your space around you, and you will be able to uh, command the room. I'm going to say to a certain degree, you're going to command the room. Um, there may be some people that don't mm, that don't hear you, don't feel you, who, who don't sense what you're doing, but there are those who do, and you just go with that, okay? But the main thing is to know that that um, in regards to these new steps that you are taking, that things are going to materialize, but there's, there's, 
there's some steps you have to take as well. And the first step is not looking behind you, not going back and saying, oh, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Woulda, coulda, shoulda doesn't have a space right now for you. OK, because what it could have should have is going to prevent you from being able to really put your eyes on the things that are moving that are here. Right. If you're looking behind you, you can't see what's going on over on this side. And that's what you're trying to get to anyway. You already know what's going on down here because you've already been there. You know what's going on right here. So it's no need to look back and say, well, maybe it could have been this. Or maybe if I had just done this, then maybe this could have happened. That's not your pot of gold. Leave it alone. All right. So we've got two cards that came up. We have a two of swords and we have the nine of chalices in reverse. So there again, I see you here. You're on the ship, you're on the boat, you are moving along to new shores. I'm seeing that in this situation with the nine of chalices there. I'm seeing again, looking back, looking back over it. You don't want to, it's okay to, um, it's okay to move on Pisces. It is okay to move on. You're not going into the abyss. You're not going into the abyss. You're going to whatever the next thing is. And so I feel like you're getting stuck in the past in both of these. You're getting stuck in the past. And it's because you keep thinking that there's something that you could have done differently. And the truth is, is that it was what it was. It is what it is. And you didn't have any really, that was a system all of it its own. And you being able, you taking, uh, it's just like if you went to a big roaring machine that was 10 times bigger than you, let's say you went out to the oil fields where they dig oil and you took a little twig or a stick and you stuck it in and you stuck it in there thinking it was going to change and it just broke the stick and kept right on going. The stick is broken. Let it go. You know, it's nothing, it's nothing that you could have done about that. But I do see that, you know, you are going to different shores, you are approaching different shores, and there are new things to see, there are new people to see, which is why we've got this card coming in, this three is coming in about that. Um, but you just gotta stop looking back, you gotta stop kind of staying in that same place mentally. Because it's holding you there. I needed to hear that Pisces, so thank you for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like got you spinning around in a circle here. You feel like, you know, instead of you um, really making it to the next phase, you just kind of feel like you're out on a raft by yourself spinning around in a circle. That's not that's not your story. Right. That's not your story right now. It doesn't have to be your story. It doesn't have to be your story, Pisces. The story is look forward, look in front of you, know that you have the help that you need and what you're looking for is right over the horizon. But you can't look backward and be going forward. It is impossible. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall. You're going to, you know, run into some situations. So I'm going to call this the last card of the day, the sun. And to me, what this is, is where you're headed. As, as, as familiar as the old might be, as nice or as comfortable as your past experience might be, there is more to see. There is more over the horizon and there's even a brighter day ahead for you. So just trust in that Pisces and know that um, where you're headed is where you want to be. You know, you know, you knew that inherently when you walked away, you knew it inherently. That's why you walked away. Your spirit knew your spirit was in your feet. <laughs> and so you have to know that it is um, that you are being divinely guided and that your divine nature will guide you to the next thing. It just will. So you're just kind of having that rear view mirror thing going on. All right, so we're moving right along to the alphabet for lovers. And again, I'm going to pull three cards from this deck too because I really want to 
um, give some advice for people who have been dealing with relationships, their own relationships, family relationships. Everybody's been all cozied up with their family and friends, or family and, and lovers and spouses and children. And sometimes we, they might be getting on your nerves. <laughs> or you might have learned something that you forgot about these people that you are with. So I just want to um, make sure that we're communicating properly and that the energies that you may be feeling, Pisces, within the relationships around you, that you know how to handle that. All right, this one says coming together and changes for the better. So maybe this time where you've been holding, I like this little grid right here, maybe this time that you've been held in or maybe the time that you have had to spend away from somebody else uh, due to the global health crisis or being shut in or on lockdown or whatever you want to call it has been good for you in terms of um, coming together and making changes for the better. Sometimes absence or distance makes the heart grow fonder for people and then for some people being holed in together with their loved ones has really made a different kind of bond so this experience that you've been having is um about coming together and about having some things some changes that happened that really did boost um, your relationship with some of your significant others don't forget that and continue to carry what you learned forward um, even past the global health crisis all right, so we have handling militancy wisely. All right, so I don't know, Pisces. Maybe somebody is um, kind of extra extroverted or they may have be on a mission um, and they may seem a little militant to you or maybe combative to you. I'm seeing combative and militant in that way. So being able to handle that situation in a wise fashion. So if you're feeling like somebody is coming for you all the time, or if you feel like, you know, okay, why do I always feel like I'm in a battle with this person? This um, time is a time for you to think about how you can handle that situation differently. Um, in the card I'm seeing about, you know, about the light, um, about recognizing somebody's light. So if you do feel like you are in at a war with this person all the time recognize their light and i think that goes back to that god um persona um or archetype where you're looking at other people you see the god in them and then you see the god in yourself as well by doing so so i think in this situation where you may be battling somebody or you may feel like you're always in a war zone with them is to try to recognize the god in them recognize the light in them and then also recognizing the light in yourself as well and that may be the help you um um, respond to the behavior differently because whenever you have a repeat performance on behaviors or pers you know like skirmishes that you're having with somebody um, it could be your nemesis it could be your sibling it could be your spouse and you're always having the same kind of little war going on with each other it's because you keep going at it the same way the same buttons get pushed the same behaviors then result and so what this is telling you is that when you get in that situation, think about that person's light and what light they're bringing to the table. Hold on. Let me let that phone ring. I'll be right back. All right. And the third card is um, successful completion and discovering the truth. And there again, I see that this is also the same type of situation where we're looking at. Hold on one second. Okay, Pisces, I'm sorry about that interruption. So again, this is what I'm seeing from this is that um, some of you have been feeling like you've been on the front line with your partner, um, could have been about this um, global health crisis, could be about other things. And sometimes these crises help us see each other more clearly, um, particularly if you're in a, a married situation or this is your spouse or your partner um, or your life partner. You guys have been on the front line together for quite some time those people that this resonates with. And what this is saying is that you're coming to the end of that. You have discovered some truths about yourselves, who you are together um, and individually, and that has been divinely purposed and divinely guided. So do know that you are going toward um, positive things. I see the sun again right up here, um, which was the, in the sun card that closed out your um, tarot reading from your um, tarot 
from before. And so I, I, I feel like for some of you, this is, this is your partner. This is your, your um, significant other, and you all have come through some changes. So do know that the month of May marks the time when you will recognize that that completion, that that part of your experience together is now finished. And the truth that you just the truths that you discovered about yourself and each other are really going to move you forward in a positive fashion. Oh, that was great. Pisces, good reading for you all today. Um, if you would like to take a deeper dive, if you want to get your own personal reading so that you can see how all of this closely connects to you, if there's something that resonated with you and you want to dig a little deeper into it, just reach out to me. I'm at Carrie, K-E-R-R-I at wooingnature.life. As always, I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a fabulous May, and I hope you're having a wonderful life.